Hi, it's Chris here from techtablets.com with the Cube i7 Stylus. This is a new model that's running on the same uh, Core M 5Y10 that the i7 had from Cube. It's 4GB of RAM and a 64GB full SSD drive. So not an eMMC drive, but a proper SSD. Let's have a look at the tablet here. Now the box was actually sealed up and everything, so hopefully it's not going to boot up in Chinese or anything like that. It should hopefully be in English for me. So overall, just feeling the tablet now, it does feel quite, uh, actually quite light compared to the i7 at least. So you can see at the bottom we do have a docking port connector here. We have the Windows Home button. And if I look on the left side here, we have two speakers, so... They're not on either side of the tablet, they're both on the left here. wonder why they've done that. Obviously for design purposes or reasons that they didn't have room maybe. But I saw the same on the i7 Remax that both the speakers are on the left side here. So we have a, a rear 5 megapixel camera right here. And the back of it is this uh, metal finish here which is the same blue, kind of dark blue matte paint job that they've used on the i6, the i7. It's uh, pretty much the same style that Cube is sticking with now and it's quite it's quite good. So around on the right hand side here we have a DC 12 volt input there for charging. We have a micro USB 3 port. We have your micro SD card slot there and a mini HDMI port here. Not the micro HDMI port that we commonly see on these tablets out of China. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I will test that to see if there's any interference over it. And on the top left hand corner we have here what looks to be a microphone just here. And we have the power on, volume up and down. On the front we do have a 2 megapixel camera here. And they have pre-applied a screen protector which is very common. Uh, this tablet does not have Gorilla Glass. It's a tempered glass they use, but it's not as scratch resistant as you find from the cornering Gorilla Glass that you get. Now this tablet, I got this one here from, actually from the Cube store from AliExpress. Now I don't have the keyboard at the moment to show you, but hopefully in the box, I'll just check that out now, they have included the stylus for me, which is a Wacom stylus that has 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity there. So that'll be interesting to check out. But before I do that, we're just going to have a look at the thickness of the tablet and its weight. So it does seem a little bit thicker while well, I've just been using the i7 uh, Remix from Cube. And this comes in at almost just over 10 millimeters, almost actually 11 millimeters there of thickness. So, you know, it's not the thinnest tablet, but it does have that powerful uh, Core M in there, which is, you know, definitely a hell of a lot faster than the Atom chips that you commonly get in these tablets. So weight wise, I'll just power on the scales here. And have a look now at the weight before I get into what else is in the packet. Okay, so it's uh, 703 grams there. That is still uh, quite a, well, it's a heavyish tablet there, but that is lighter than the, the i7, the original model. So moving on here to the box with the accessories. I hope that the stylus is included in the box. Let's have a look and see what we have. So this is obviously the power adapter. So if you're living in the US, you won't need an adapter there for the plug because that's the two prong US style. And the rating of it is 12 volts, 2.5 milliamps there. And it looks to be a 3, 2.5, maybe bigger, no, it's bigger than that, plug there. I'll find out about that later. So let's have a look and see what else we have in the box here. A uh, couple of warranty cards here. It's a VIP for Cube. And that is, of course, it's all in Chinese. Uh, this looks like it's had the quality pass. So that's good to see that hopefully someone has checked it for any faults. More information, leaflets, uh, Chinese, and user guide, it does have English, there we go, so that's good. There's a little bit there of just uh, basic layout and whatnot of the tablet. 
So that's good to see some instructions that are in Chinese and English there, which is good for international buyers like myself. So there is nothing else in there. And now onto this packet right here, which is the official stylus from Cube. So it's the CEP01 stylus. You can see there that it has pressive sensitive pen with the 1024 pressure points compatible with the Cube i7 stylus. Of course, any Wacom supported stylus will work on the tablet because they are all compatible, or they should be, so I'm told. So have a look and see what they have in here. What have we got here? Okay, so this is the tool there for removing the the nibs there for the pen, and they've included quite a few here for you, just in case you're if you're a real stylus user and you're going to need maybe a few more, then they uh, can. How many we got here? Then you can change them. So they've given us five there that we can change over later if you do end up wearing those nibs down. So the stylus itself, let's have a look and see what the actual quality of it is like. Now the keyboard and the stylus are an extra, they are not included. Pretty much like what Microsoft does, if you want the keyboard or you want the stylus, you have to pay extra because not everyone needs the stylus at least. I mean the keyboard probably, I think most people would want a keyboard. And I haven't actually got that at the moment, but I do have is the i7 keyboard, which I can try out. Sorry about the focus there. So this is a good look here at the stylus. So we have a, there's a button at the top. Hopefully that maybe that will launch one note. I'm not really too sure. Or maybe that's for the, that's for the eraser, isn't it? So if you, yeah, I think if you, you swap that around, you can erase things on the screen. So when you're using paint or Photoshop and here we have the button, one button on there, the, no, it's just a one button and of course the nib there. So I'm going to turn on the tablet now and just boot it up, see how much free space we have in Windows and just use the pen a little bit and have a look at that. I will do a lot of benchmarks and various other tests, including gaming and some up and coming videos. So do keep an eye out for those. So here goes, I'm going to turn on the tablet and hopefully it has A, enough battery and B, hopefully it's not all in Chinese and I have to install a language pack. I get it, that uh, started up quite quick there. All right, it looks like it has Windows Pro on here. It says Windows, oh, okay, Windows being in the bottom corner there. So I'm just gonna have a close look at the screen here and see if we can have a look and see that it's, oh, my camera's having some trouble here, sorry about that. So we can see that it's Windows 8.1 with Bing and it's not a fully laminated screen. There is a gap there. I don't know if you can pick that up here, but you can see that the IPS panel is below 1080p IPS screen. And we have the glass digitizer panel on the top there. And you can see that there is a, a gap there. So it's kind of like the first generation iPad Air with that gap. And it's quite common on these tablets. It might have something to do with the, the, uh, the pen that we have, the digital pen, that it has to be like that, or down to costs cutting probably maybe cost cutting for the tablet. So I'll have a look at a few other things here in Windows and see what the available space is. Okay, so we have 45.1 gigabytes free and there is 53 it says here. So we obviously have that recovery partition here with Windows that'll be on there. And just have a look at another couple of things to see if the pen is working okay. You can see just holding it above the screen now it's detecting it and that is good. I don't want to see now if it has palm rejection there. It does seem to do that because I can't, as soon as it detects the stylus, yeah, there we go. I can't select anything on the screen. So just using it now, it does actually seem reasonably accurate. I'll do some more tests on the stylus. Uh, keep in mind that uh, I'm not actually an artist. So if I do anything, it's going to be quite basic there. You're not going to get like a huge uh, portrait or something. I'm going to paint using paint shop with the stylus, but I will do some tests. And if you want to see something tested out that I can maybe test for you, please post that in the comments and I'll see if I can get that. But it does seem to work quite good. So there is palm rejection here. And later on I will have some other videos. So I will use uh, OneNote, I think it is, that supports pens quite well. And I know that some users mentioned that Windows 10 now within the actual Edge browser you can write on the screen too. So it might be handy to have the pen. 
So I'm going to have a look at the device manager now. I'll just use the pen to just see how well that works. Seems to be quite good. Now the touch response of the screen, I'll just check that now. That is also, I mean, this seems quite fluid here. Whoop. Doesn't seem to be any lag of any sorts with the touch. And keep in mind that I still have the screen protector on. I will remove that shortly. And, oh, okay, there is a bit of haptic feedback there. So there's a vibration touching the home button. You can hear that. So, uh, device manager. Let's have a look and see what we have on board here. And I will benchmark the disk drive and the USB 3 port and see if it has uh, any issues like the original QI7, which wouldn't run faster than 40 megabytes per second on the uh, USB 3 port, the micro USB 3 port. So it's a 4C 64 gigabyte SSD. And what else do we have under sensors? We have a, so we have the orientation sensor there, all the standard stuff. Now networking probably is just the usual, yes it is, it's the Realtek chip there. Connected up via USB 2. So that doesn't actually support, it's not wireless AC, which is a shame. It would be good to see some of these tablets now to try and have a wireless AC. Because most of them now, literally all of them either have this or the Broadcom chipset handling the wireless and Bluetooth. It's an all-in-one chipset there. So if there's anything else to have a look at here. So we do have, of course, that uh, CPU, which is the 5Y10 from Intel. And that will be listed under here under CPUs. It's nothing really much there to look at. So integrated cameras under USB. And what else the display tap is, of course, is the Intel HD. This is the 5300. And here are our processors there. So it's a dual core with four threads. And the base speed is just 800 megahertz there. But it can turbo up to 200. And I will test out thermal throttling if there is any and benchmark and push the system really hard just to find any problems or anything there so far. So before I finish this video, I will just check out the keyboard, even though it's not the official one for this model, it's a cube keyboard I have for the i7, which should fit according to the uh, spacing here of the dock at the bottom. So I'm just going to test that out now. So in front of me here now is the QI7. It's an 11.6 inch keyboard for the original, the first i7 model, but it would and should fit this on, which, okay, yeah, it does. You can see there that now it's hooked up and it, it is too big because we've got a half an inch here and about a half an inch on the other side there. So it's too wide, but it looks like it's gonna work. Definitely, I mean, the touchpad is, is working there and the Keyboard, yeah, Windows key is working, so the keyboard works there fine. Of course, it's probably not going to actually fit down properly. Dock in there nicely. No, I mean, because look at that, I mean, there is, it's just too big. So hopefully, well, enough. hopefully it's not going to take too long. It is on the slow boat, which is the keyboard, the official keyboard for this, which I will uh, update a video review of the keyboard, the official keyboard for the Cube i7 stylus here. So that's the initial unboxing and hands-on. As I said, do check out and keep an eye out for um, up and coming videos here of benchmarks, gaming, everything I can think of to test on the, the new i7 stylus here. Thank you for watching the video and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.